we're now going to take a look at some advanced effects. First thing we're going to take a look at is group effects. So group effects are when you apply effects over groups of fixtures rather than individual fixtures. So usually, say if I selected one group and applied an effect, it would run that effect across all the fixtures in that group. But with group effects, I can say select two different groups and apply a group effect and it will run the fixtures across one group and followed by the other, as we'll see here. So if I go get my spots stage left and spots stage right, those two different groups, and say add group effects. Now I'm going to add a dimmer chase. You can see that in instead of the effect running across all the individual fixtures, it's pulsing across those two groups, like so. So that's a really quick way to add uh, effects with the parts that you want by just selecting the groups and then adding a group effect. Another thing that group effect is really useful for though is expanding your show if you add more fixtures and you want those included into your existing effects. So how I can do this is if I go and say this time, just add uh, a group effect to the spots on the stage left. So I say add group effects, intensity, dimmer chase. I'm going to record this effect with just those spots. What I've got to do first is change the group spread. So by default, this is set to groups and that's where it's just running across the group as a whole. But if I change this to all channels, then it starts running across all the individual intensity channels, so all the individual fixtures rather than the group as a whole. If I record that to a playback, so I've got that effect there recorded to that playback, I'm now going to add extra fixtures into that group and it will add it onto that playback. So say for example I've just patched some new fixtures, I'm going to put them into that group and it will add those into the effect. So if I select both spots stage left and stage right and say record stage left. Yes, so I've added the stage right spots into that stage left group. And then if I bring up this playback, you can see the effect is running nicely across all 12 of those fixtures, both of those groups I've then added into that one group. It's added the effect on for those extra fixtures. So that's really useful for expanding your show. The next thing we're going to look at is pixel map effects, simple pixel map effects. So if I go and select the Nexus panels here, if I just zoom in on the visualizer so we can see those. I'm going to select these, these Nexus panels at the back of the visualizer here and say, instead of add group effects this time, I'm going to add effects. And again, uh, this time I'm going to select pixel map. So here we've got a few simple pixel mapping effects. I'm going to select an example square. And you can see it's added that square effect across my panels. Now the question is, how does it know how my panels are arranged? So if I go back to layout one and select my panels again, I can go to view grid here. In view grid, you can see this grid that's been automatically generated based on the group of those panels. So because I've got 25 panels, it's automatically arranged those in a five by five grid for me. Um, I can move those around if that's incorrect. I can uh, change the grid size and move uh, fixtures around within that grid, but we'll cover that later on with pixel mapping. Now that's how that grid is generated automatically from the group of fixtures. So the final thing we're going to look at in this section is group masters. So group masters are really useful if you want to control to say the speed and size of some effects uh, on faders. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is record an effect. I'm going to use my spots and my washes. I'm going to add an effect. Uh, I'll do just a position effect and say a circle effect. I don't want to use it on groups. I'm going to say no. If I zoom out, I've added that circle effect, but I just need to add intensity in for my fixtures as well. Give it that intensity, and there we go. We can see that circle effect is running across my spots and my washes. I'm going to record that to a playback, like so. So on this playback, I've just got that circle effect recorded with that intensity in there as well. What I want to be able to do is set up faders using group masters so I can control the speed and size of that effect individually. So to do that, I'm going to select my spots and my washes again. So you need to select the fixtures that you want your group masters to take effect on. And then 
you need to select the attributes that you want your group masters to take effect on. So I need to go to the position window and just put some pan and tilt data into the programmer because I want my masters to take effect on the pan and tilt attributes of those fixtures. It doesn't matter what data you put into the programmer, any data at all as long as there's that pan and tilt information in there. So I'm going to record that to a couple of playbacks, one there and one there, and clear the programmer. And then if I triple tap the S key or playback legend, under the function tab in the QStack options, we've got two options here, QStack is a size master and QStack is a speed master. So for this playback, I'm going to say yes for size master. And for this playback here, I'm going to say yes for speed master. And you can see on the playback legends, we've got SZM for size master and SPM for speed master. If I now activate my original effect, Currently, these masters aren't going to take effect. What I need to do is activate these using the play key. So if I select the play key for each of these, you see my effects have stopped and just returned to the home positions because faders are currently at zero. If I now lift up my size and my speed, you can see I can begin to control those using those faders. So I can put my speed up right up to max and it's going to go up to the max speed that's been recorded in my original effects. If I want that to go faster, I need to make the speed faster in my original effects. Bring that back down, stop that effect, like so. If I want to release those, so they're no longer taking effect, I can't just bring the fader to zero, because it might be really annoying if you bring your fader to zero and suddenly your master uh, goes off, and then suddenly uh, your speed or size returns to normal. I need to press the release key to release it instead press release on each of these playbacks and you can see if I just reactivate my effects they're now going to run as normal because those masters are no longer taking effect. So that's a few bits on advanced effects. We're now going to move on to look at the execute window.